the greatest church on the planet doing this summer? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Man, we have got a lot of things going on around the church. Today, our teenagers, the middle school and high school, many of them are at the uh, a summer beach camp right now, just getting filled up with the Word of God. And so for all the moms and dads, they're in good hands. Uh, we've got some really cool texts that, that God's moving in a, in a wonderful way. And I'm a, I'm a pastor, but I'm also a consumer. I've got, I've got children. I've got, a, I've got a child down there. And I know as a role of a parent is our job is just to put our kids in front of a move of God as often as possible. So could you do something with me? It, whether you have a teenager or not, could you, could you carve out some time and just remember them every day um, in your prayers this week? Could you do that? Just pray that God moves on the hearts of these kiddos as, as they, they get filled up before they go back to school. I just believe that, that, um, that a young person, once they get really on fire for God and know how valuable they are to God, that their value is not just wrapped up in their GPA, in their in their their uh, their batting average, but but in Christ and in that alone, and and not just really, it's not about what what other friends think of them and and how they're doing. It you no, know, it's it's God proved their value when He sent Jesus to die for their sins. And once a kid gets a hold of that, I'm just I'm convinced of this: there are no wild kids, Pastor. You don't you don't know my kid. No no no, they, they just don't have vision. That's all. Because the Bible says without vision, everybody, all of us, we run wild. We cast off restraint. So this is what I'm praying, that God would give our kids vision that would just keep them walking with God all the days of their life, okay? So I know you're gonna pray with me over that. Um, if you're a guest with us, we wanna say a big welcome home. We are so thrilled that you're here today. Those that are joining us online, we know I've got my, my phone lit up this week. We've got leaders that are on vacation. We've got students on vacation. Uh, you know, it was just having a, a great time making memories. And so today, more than ever, we wanna say a big hello to our online campus. One more time, can we welcome those that are in another room right now that are joining us? That's right. Glad you guys are here. We're having a wonderful time here. Man, the sun's out, gun's out. Come on, everybody. It's a great, great day here at Highlands. But, but this is what I, I find being, that I'm meeting new families every single weekend. Um, even on Wednesday nights, we've got that coming up this Wednesday. And so this is what we want. Uh, could you help me help you? Our church would love to serve you. We'd love to equip you with all the information that you need to know how to get connected around here and learn more about us. And one way that you can do that is at 11 o'clock, okay, today, 11 o'clock on Sundays, if you can just make yourself across, make your way across the, the, the lobby to our Dream Team Central. We've got a team of people over there that would love to serve you and be a part of the Next Steps gathering. They can tell you where we've been and where we're going. You've heard about that on the announcement, I, but I, I really want you to get plugged in. I want you to get connected and meet some amazing families that are here waiting for you here at Highlands. And then also on the, on the seat back in front of you, there's a QR code. Uh, on that seat back in front of you. If you'll just go ahead and scan that. We're, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna load up your inbox and nobody's gonna call you at work and bother you, but we wanna give you um, all the, some, some great information. This is what's coming up, what you can be a part of. And also on that QR code, on that, that form, it, it's a place where you, you can share with us things that you would like our team to pray with you about. Are there some things that are touching your life that you would just rather, you would rather have a group of people saying, you know what, I'll pray for you. I will partner with you this week between, come on, between Sundays to, 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 to just encourage you in your faith. And, and they would love to do that. So help us help you. Go ahead and fill that, that QR code, scan that QR code and fill that out. And that would be awesome. This coming week, uh, this Wednesday, we've got another chance to be with us to get together at our, our Wednesday night for ministry for everybody, for the kiddos, for, for mom and dad, for the, for the students. Um, and then we've got some sweet treats afterwards. We've had a great time the last few weeks, haven't we, church? Hadn't that been fun just getting together and growing in our faith as we, we go into the word of God? Well, I'm gonna pray in just a minute, but before I do, I'm gonna let you know, we're gonna wrap up today's message series called, called Boating Season. And we've, we've been discussing different boating stories in the Bible. We started out with probably one of the most famous one was Noah and the ark. Week two, we talked about when the boat that was in a big storm, that Jesus was down in the, in the bow. He was asleep. He was asleep, not because he didn't care, but because he wasn't worried. Come on, church, that's good preaching right there. 
And God's not worried about the thing that's keeping you up at night. So we'll just go ahead and take it to him so you can sleep good too. And then, then the week after was Father's Day. Today, today, um, I'm really excited about today's message because we're, we're gonna talk about probably one of my favorite boating stories uh, on, the, on the story of a man's night, life named Jonah. Jonah and the great fish. You've, you've probably, whether you've grown up in church or not, maybe you've heard about this story. And what's, what's powerful about this story is this. It's, it's if God ever provided a picture of our human nature and our inclination to run from difficult things, just run from difficult things. He painted this picture in the life of one of his great guys, one of the leaders in, in the story of Jonah. So I'm gonna pray in, in a second now, but when I do, let me ask you, let me ask you. Here's a, here's a question for all of us that I really want us to, I want us to pray over this. And, and I believe that God's gonna show you some things that you may not be running, but we, we have, we put lipstick on it and we say, well, I'm just avoiding some things. I'm just praying about, no, you're running from some things. Come on now. We, we, we like to put better labels on things. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't suppress. I, I just, I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, I like that lipstick. Keep it on talking about that. I don't have anger issues. I just have, I have some tension in my life. Love the lipstick. So here's the question for us today. Are you ready? What are you running from? What are you running from in your life? That you, God just keeps saying, we're here again, aren't we? We're here again. And I'd rather you just run to the storm and through the storm because the more you run from it, the more you will see of it. I am preaching before I pray this morning. Okay, we're gonna help some people. I say we, God's gonna help some people and, uh, and we are gonna love some people through their storm today. Let's pray today, together, church. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And it is in that name that we are not afraid of the storm. Thank you, God, that you haven't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And because of that faith that we have in our heart, because of the person of the friend of Jesus, the savior of the world that we live for, thank you that we can face those things in our life today that maybe we've been avoiding, that we can look right at them and know, hey, God is on our side. And if he be with us, who can be against us? Father, I, I pray for those that are joining us online, whatever they are, that they, that they, they get plenty of rest, plenty of sleep. But Lord, that you would, you would challenge them, even out of town, that you would challenge them. What are you running from? What are you running from? Today will mark the day in our life. It'll be a catalyst day, a, a day that we can look back and we can say, and that was the day that I went all in with God. That was the day that I just... I stood up on my feet and I said, you know what? God is with me. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. So Father, thank you for this opportunity to preach, to share your word. And as we do, I know that hope rises. I know that faith comes. And God, I know, I know that as we have lifted you up already with the team here worshiping you, that you are drawing people to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Man, I, how many of you, y'all, y'all and we don't, we're not led by our feelings, but how many of you sense that God, God's doing something already? Like God's already doing something. He's done that in my life. He's doing that in my heart. All this week, we've been praying for you. And I've shared some of the content that I've shared with you. I shared with you a year ago, but um, I, I wanna share, I wanna go a little different, different slant at a very familiar story. But we do need to really, you know, play something back that I shared with you, um, meaning that I, the, the names of the characters in the story and the definition of their names really it, it, it is a prophetic word about their life. The, the name jo, Jonah, it means this, it means dove. So Jonah's name literally means it means dove. It, it's, it's, birds have this crazy ability to sense 
when a storm is coming, and what, if you watch animals, even like tsunamis or anything, when you watch, hey, when you, when you see a tiger running by you and not to you, you better run with that tiger, right? When birds fly away, you're like, we probably should start taking notes. And so his name means dove. His, he's known as the reluctant or the runaway prophet because he's known to be like his name, to fly away when things come. And, and his dad is a Mittai. A Mittai, his name means truth. His name means truth. So we have, we have Jonah. The, the prophet that flies away when discomfort and hard times come. And, and, and then he is the son of truth. So he is carrying truth, but does not want to carry it to the crowd that God is calling to. All right, so we're, so we're going to pick right back up. We're going to talk about this flighty prophet today. This is how our boating story begins in Jonah. Jonah chapter one, go to the great city of Nineveh. Make a note of that. Go to the great city of Nineveh, God speaking to Jonah, and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Now look, this was an unprecedented event because up until this point, God's prophets have only been sent to God's people, the Hebrews. And so he's asking him to go outside of your people group and go to another group. And then uh, the verse two goes, continues. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he said, I need you to go to Nineveh. And, and Jonah goes, great, on my way, go in the opposite direction. The complete opposite direction. Now, before we get down on Jonah, um, we, you know, going the opposite direction, let's look at some of the history of, of Nineveh, the city. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria in biblical times. It, it, today would be the, the northern portion of, of Iraq. Now, Jonah was a prophet to the nation of Israel. Assyria was the main or the greatest enemy to Israel. In Israel, uh, of Israel, Assyria was known for their cruel torture of their victims when they were traveling throughout their towns. They were actually famous for, for, their, for their torture. One historian that I read uh, just this past week said, said that they would cut off the legs of their victims and one of the arms, but would leave one arm so they could shake their hand as they died. Folks, that's some gangster stuff right there. I'm not going to lie to you. That's, just, that's messed up, okay? It, it, so imagine this. Imagine God telling you, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to go to the capital of Iraq, but, but the, before you do, I want you to be sure to, to take your Bible with you, to, to, to wear your favorite American, t, American flag T-shirt and the American flag fanny pack. You know you got that rocking. And I want you to march right down to the capital of Iraq. And I want, to meet, I want you to meet with the heads of state of Iraq. And I want you to say, repent, repent from false gods, turn from Islam and surrender your life to the Messiah, Jesus. How's that working for you? So that is what's really happening, you know, in this storyline, all right? So... So again, what are you running from? But here's another question. What do you do when God asks you to do hard things? Hard things. And in, 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 in looking at this story, and I've, I've, I've got some great insight from some friends and, and something that I really wanna, I wanna share with you that I was challenged with a while back. I, I, I believed it the entire time, but when it was said to me the way it was said, it landed. And, and here's the idea. Write this statement down. There is a difference between pain and harm. There is a difference between pain and harm. If a doctor goes in to perform surgery on you to remove cancer from your body, there will be pain involved. There, there's gonna be some, some soreness after that surgery. But watch this, the goal of that surgery is not to harm you. The goal is to heal you, right? Pain is not harm. When God leads us in his sovereign plan through a painful season, 
Listen, we develop trusting God because even though that season hurts, God's not trying to harm you. You need to hear that because we just put labels on, that's the devil. Could it be God trying to grow you up, refine you, work on some character things, not to harm you? His plans are good. They're not to harm you. They're to help you and to prosper you. But pain is not harm. All right, there is, it's, it's different. And we as a church, and we as a community, and my God, we as a, as a country have got to grow a spine and toughen up and stop running from painful seasons and uncomfortable conversations. This is a dangerous trend in the Big C Church with Christians that I'm seeing right now. The moment things get tough and the second feelings are hurt, what do we do? We fly from our responsibilities. Okay, and everyone who grew up playing sports, you know, all my athletes, I'm, I, you know it's to be true. The, you know your best coaches never try to create comfort for you. They ne- the ones that you, I mean, at the moment, you hate their guts. I'm not gonna lie. At the moment, you're like, bless God, it wouldn't hurt my feelings at all if this one dropped dead. Like you were just, you know, but you look back as an adult and you said, I learned some things there. I grew, I grew some things there. I, I, I grew in some, some, some toughness and some perseverance and I, 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 I stopped running from it and I began to actually enjoy running to some, some things that used to make me cry, now kind of makes me laugh. And, and in practice, their goal, the tough coaches, their goal was to, well, oh, listen, church, to normalize pain. Not harm, but pain. Because they knew that there would be painful moments in a game that would either cause you to quit or say this, I've been here before. What do I do when I want to throw up? Hurry up and get it over. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That's an awful word picture there. But you know what I'm saying? I've been here before. And ladies and gentlemen, At this season of my life, I've seen some things. And you know what? You have too. And so when things come and and, and, and tries to hinder some some moves of God in our family and in our life, we can laugh and go, I've been here before. God was faithful then. He's going to be faithful now. Honey, I've been through the recession of 2008. What are we going to do? Trust God. And some of you have been, been through recession after recession. You've seen the cycle and you actually know that the financial uh, uh, consultants, they are right. It's cyclical. That You see it coming. What are we going to do? I guess we're just going to have to trust God as if it's like a last resort. So Jonah made the mistake, and this is what, and we do it too, that since he couldn't see any good reason to go to Nineveh, there must not be a good reason to go to Nineveh. Here's, here's another reason Jonah struggled so much. He didn't want to practice, and he didn't want to preach repentance, grace and mercy, because he was a stranger to it himself. <laughs> Let's keep reading. He went down to Joppa instead, yeah. He found a ship going to Tarshish. Hey, can, can I, can I, I want, you, I, I want you to write this one down. You can post this one, please. Write this down. When you decide to run from the Lord, there will always be a vessel willing to take you. Every, I've I've seen it too many times. Whenever I decide I'm gonna give God my no instead of my yes, there will always be a vessel that will get me there quicker. And can I just tell you, it normally comes in, in ungodly soul ties. It, it normally comes with people running the wrong direction and they usually run in a crowd. You may meet them individually, but they will ba- take them back to the, they will take you back to their camp. Public service announcement, there will always be a vessel. It'll always be obvious. It'll always be con- actually more convenient. Come on, that vessel, it, it's, 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 it, you can see it coming a mile away, okay? When I was young, I rarely made a dumb decision all by myself. 
How many of you know what I'm talking about? I rarely made that bad decision. Why? I was, I was on a vessel. I was with a group of people. And, and they made it easy to make that decision, matter of fact. When the easiest thing I could have done is just say, God, I'm just gonna go your way. All right, let's keep reading. He went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare. Everybody say, pay the fare. Say it like you've done it. Yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. And went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So the first, the first idea is when you, when you decide to run from the Lord, there will always be a vessel willing to take you there. But here's another thought. Write this down. When you decide to run from the Lord, you'll f- soon find out the disobedience costs. It never pays. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when, when, when it is of the Lord, yes, there is an investment and there will be sacrifice, but listen, it is an investment. It's not an expenditure. It's like uh, when, a seed, when a seed leaves your hand and lands in the hand of God, there was always a, a, a harvest coming back. That seed will always come back bigger than you sowed it, okay? Now, watch this. Here's the thing. With, with sin, it's the same way. Uh, it, the, 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 the sin of running from God, it never comes back the same. It always comes back bigger. It, it cost him. He paid that fear. See, when God makes a way, he also, he also supplies that need. Watch, Jonah had to supply his own need. Why? Because that's what sin does. Ha, you've heard me say this so many times. I hope you say it to your kids and wear them out too. Sin will always take you further than you wanted to go, cost you more than you wanted to pay, and keep you longer than you intended to stay. Okay? Think about it. God tells Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. Instead, he goes to Joppa on the way to Tarshish. I did did the math. I did the math. Look at this. Obeying God, 550 miles. Disobeying God, 2,500 miles. Those were not frequent flyer miles, I assure you. We, we think it's harder and bigger. We think we're wrong. Sin costs more. Sin takes you further. Say no to God and God's will and God's ways. It always costs. It never pays, right? Let me pastor you for a minute. If some of us would put the amount of energy that we, that we give to running from God, to running to God and for God, you would be amazed. You would be amazed at the peace that comes with it. It's actually easier, and watch, it's actually less miles. And and, and can I just tell you from, from, and I'm saying this not to show a trophy, but hey, let me show you some scars, okay? It, It will, sin costs your wallet. It does. Sin costs you in your emotions, it keeps you up at night. Sin costs you with your peace. You walk in turmoil and, and not in peace. And you walk in knots. What, what is that? that that's that 2,500 miles is what that is. Hey, watch this. Sin also costs your family. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I, I, my sin is my thing and it doesn't affect. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Sin always colors outside the lines. Okay, today, I'm not saying that all the storms you may be facing in life are because of your straight up disobedience to God. I'm not saying that at all. I am suggesting that some of them are. Okay, let's keep reading. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea and such a violent storm arose that the ship was threatened to break up. Isn't that cool that even though Jonah is running from God, Man, listen, God is running after Jonah. Please hear my, please hear my heart today. That, that, that I, I think it's so amazing that even in his disobedience and even in his out, all outright rebellion, God never gave up on him. Why? Because that's what a good heavenly father does, right? My, my parents told me so many times how you can never outrun our prayers. And they were right. My enjoyment living for the world was always short-lived. I was never good at it. 
I was never good at it. You know, I, I, the most miserable person on the planet is a backslider. And, and here, do you want to know why? Because you have too much of God to enjoy the world and you got too much of the world to enjoy God. <laughs> and as a parent and as a pastor, I want, I, want, I want you to help your kids be miserable. Every step outside of the will of God, it just feels like wet clothes. It just doesn't fit right. It's frustrating. Why? Sweetheart, you can't outrun our prayers. You can't outrun our prayers. You can't do it. And, and that's, that's, we shared this last week. I, my prayer, my prayer is that our kids have the most boring testimony on the planet. I live for God. I was raised in church. I love my mom and dad. And I didn't always get it right, but my God, I, I was born again at the earliest possible age. And, and I've, I've enjoyed watching the blessings of the Lord on my parents. And I want some of that action. I want some of that peace. I want some of that joy. And I, I just grew up in it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not boring. That's called biblical beauty. That's wonderful. Why? Because, because a great story always comes with a great pain. Coincidentally, what does God call the city of Nineveh in verse two? Look, look at these two scriptures right here. Go to the great city, the great city, the great city of Nineveh, all right? Watch this. Then the Lord has sent a great wind on the sea. I've never seen that before. Hey, go to the great city, all right? There's a great wind coming. Ladies and gentlemen, God was telling Jonah, if you refuse the great city, you will experience a great storm. There will always be a storm attached to your sin. Always. The Bible, the Bible doesn't say that every difficulty is the result of sin. It does not say that. But the Bible does teach us that every sin will bring difficulty into our life. And this is when we, this is where we get it off, what we get off, and we, we don't quite believe that. We, we know it's true, but we don't quite believe it. And here's why. Because sin doesn't pay up at, on Fridays at 5 p.m. And you think a couple Fridays goes by, and, and I guess we're good. And we talked about that in the month of, of June, where, where the writers of Psalms, all, all of them were saying, I don't understand, because it looks like that, that the wicked people are winning. Like, like it, they're living better than we are. It doesn't make sense. Here's the reason it doesn't make sense. You think it has to make sense by Friday at five, but it doesn't. But it will pay. It will pay. Again, I'm not saying all the storms in our life are because of sin. I'm not saying that at all. I am suggesting that some of it is. As Christ followers, we can know that the storms that God sends our life, I had a fresh revelation of this, are storms of love sometimes. Stor it's storms of life. Let's just reframe that, storms of love, to cause you to wake up, my friend. Let's get practical. Let's get painfully practical. Are you ready for this? That DUI you got, it was a storm of love, friend. Because your, your drinking has gotten so out of hand that now you're making selfish decisions that are putting others at risk. That was not a storm. That was a storm of love. How about this? Debt collectors calling your cell phone. It's a, it's a storm of God's love to remind you that spending is out of control. It's not the devil being mean to you. It's a storm of love. Right? How about this? Your, your spouse discovered uh, so, some 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 oh, by the way, hidden credit cards. And there was some intense fellowship about that conversation, all right? That was a storm of love, ladies and gentlemen, that you were found out. Why? Because if you lied about that, the harvest always comes back bigger than the seeds you planted. Years from now, it could be bigger than silly credit cards. It could be a lie that destroys your family. It's a storm of love. It's the mercy of God that you were caught. It's the grace of God that it didn't go well. Let's stop throw a label on it and call it the devil. We can say, thank you, God, for a second chance. Here's the word of the Lord for someone today. Stop running from God. There's no refuge from him. There's only refuge in him. 
What are you running from today? What are you running from today? You may or may not know the rest of the story. So here it is in a nutshell. All the old people call it cliff notes. Here we go. Okay. Jonah stopped running and he took responsibility for his bad choice. You know what? That's what repentance looks like. Repentance doesn't say, sorry. Repentance goes, that was all me. I own it. That's, that was me. And I don't, I, don't, I don't want to do this. I'm changing my mind, changing my direction. That's what repentance, direction. But, but, but here's the beautiful thing. It starts with, I was right here. I am the square root of my problems. That's me. And I'm not pointing, we, in our country right now, we love to point fingers. We love, it's gotta be this person. The reason I did this is because that happened to me. All of us have wounds and I'm not, I'm not diminishing those. And I'm not saying they didn't happen. I'm not saying they, they weren't awful. I am saying at some point, we have to own our decisions. Newsflash, own it. And the beauty of the restoration plan of God goes into effect. Here's a funny story. When, when, my, when my youngest was really little, I was outside in the, in the, on the driveway and I see her, her bike, her bicycle that was laying over it, it, next to the mailbox, next to the, the garbage can. And, and I'm like, well, first of all, um, I bought that. Why are we throwing that away? Come on, dads. What, what's the story there? So I said, hey, hey, Squirt. I said, wait, well, well, what's the story of the, she goes, oh, it's okay. I, I, I didn't want it. It's okay. I, did, I, I just didn't want it. And it's, it's, something's broken. And it was, it, and I, I'm like, really? Okay, well, hey, let dad try to fix it. No, 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 no. You, there's no need for you to go out there and, 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 and try to fix it because it's, it's really broken, really. She just went on and on. So with every excuse, I take another step toward this bicycle that I bought that we are not throwing away, right? So we, we get about halfway there. She turns around, she goes, okay, 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 okay. Here's the truth. I got my jump rope stuck in, uh, uh, in the gears and the spokes and in the chain and something happened and I just, I, I don't want it, I'm so sorry, I don't know. And I just, what do you know what I did? I started laughing at her. I'm like, I can fix that, it's okay. Can, can I just, can I help somebody today? God's like, let's go walk out to the street and let's look at this thing. No, 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 it's okay. I'm, I'm good. I've, I've conquered that area in life. I've got that on the lockdown. I'm actually getting, you're healing my heart. Thank you, Jesus. I'm good there. God's like, with every step and every excuse, God's like, I'm so glad. Hey, let's just go talk about, it. no, no there's, no, there's no sense in you coming all this way. You're so busy in the Middle East. There's no sense in walking down my driveway. And, 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 and what's God doing? Okay, okay. And he's walking right to it. The moment you go, okay, okay, okay. I made a decision that made this thing not work anymore. That was me. And God would say to you, okay, but I can fix things like that. And I can redeem things like that. Even the things that you did. It was your fault. It's okay. I'm God. God wants to prove to you how loving and how good and how merciful he is in your life. But you've got to say, yep, my, my bike, my jump rope, that's me. Look what, look what the Bible says Jonah did. Pick me up. I love this in chapter one. Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. And, but this is the most beautiful part of the scripture right here. I know this is all my fault. I know this is on me, that this great storm has come upon us. Okay, now watch this. This great storm has come upon us. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You thought your sin only touched you. No, no, no. Your running affects others too. Mom, dad, your running affects your kids. They don't know. It doesn't, it's not a matter of do they know about it. Okay, the seed of rebellion, they're seeing that in your heart. 
they are picking that up. Kids have spiritual antennas. The, and, you, and you do too. You can walk into the room right after a fight and you're like, hey guys, I got a quick, is everything okay? And no one said anything, did they? Why? Something's going on. Something's happening. Your, hey mom, dad, your kids know something's going on. Something's going on. Make that, hey, just say, you know what? It's my fault. It's my fault. And I'm tired of seeing my kids in a storm as well. How am I doing, parents? Come on. Tired of seeing my kids shaken by storms, okay? Let's keep, keep reading, keep reading. So God sent this great fish to, to, to take care of Jonah. It wasn't to punish him. It was to get him to where he was supposed to be. If you would just own it, God's rescue plan would go into effect, all right? Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Everybody say a second time. All right, this is what the word of the Lord says. Hey, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message that I give you. Guess what the, the message was? The same message in chapter one. The same message in chapter one. All that drama could have been avoided and Jonah would have obeyed the first time. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. Write this statement down, come on. There is no sense in asking God for direction if you haven't obeyed his last directive. God's will doesn't change just because you run from it. Just because you avoid it, maybe a, a, another word will come. Oh, it'll be a word, the same word, another time. I was, I was speaking with somebody a long time ago and, um, and I, knew, I knew there was no repentance well, Pastor, you don't know someone's heart. Yeah, but I can see their words. Out of the abundance of their heart, the mouth was speaking. So I'm watching the words and it was everybody else's fault. And I'm like, well, man, it sounds like you got it figured out. So I'm not needed here, okay? I can't help you. And by the way, God can't help you either. Well, he's God, he can do whatever he wants. No. He can't help us if we don't own our decision. But once we do, he's like, I am so glad that you shared that with me. I'm, I see your heart of repentance. And guess what? The fish is on the way. The fish is on the way. Did y'all get anything out of that great boat story today? Come on. God's word is true. God's word is true. Let me pray for us before we leave today. Heavenly Father, I pose this question again to your people. What are you running from? What are you trying to avoid? What's that word that God has spoken to you? What is that thing that he has shown you that you're not walking in, you're running from? So Father, right now, this is our opportunity. Not just to name it, but to make a decision. What are we gonna do with this today? What is God speaking to you? And what are you gonna do about it? I love that question. So Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us another chance. Not another word, but another chance. Today, we know what to do with it. We will obey and we'll walk in obedience. Father, help us as a church, help us as a country to not run from hard things. Give us the faith, give us the courage to stand in the face of a storm and say, as far as me and my house, we're gonna serve God. We're gonna trust God. We're gonna live for God. We're gonna stand for God. Still in an attitude of prayer. We, we never wanna close out a ministry moment without giving people the opportunity to run to God. <laughs> Not just to obey, but to, but to go, go to Him and begin a relationship or to go to Him and renew a relationship. Maybe you're here today and, and that's you. You've been running from God, but you know what? It's not because you're trying to do your own thing. You're just, you just never started that relationship. You don't know the God that can be trusted. Maybe someone painted a bad picture of God to you and you think God's trying to get, get back at you. No, he's not trying to get back at you. He's just trying to get a relationship with you. And if you're here today, you say, you know what, pastor, that's me. I wanna begin a relationship with God today. I want a real one, a real relationship with God. Or pastor, today I'd like to rededicate my life. And what I mean is I'm not where I used to be walking in my relationship with God, but today I wanna, I wanna renew that. I wanna go all in with God. I wanna walk with God again today. My, my, my running away has cost me um, 
time and resources, my peace, unfortunately, my family. Today, I want to repent. I want to own it and go, that was me. And I want to run back to God. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, please count me in on that prayer. I'm going to say a general prayer over the crowd, those that are joining us online. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I'm running to God. That's me. I'm not talking about church membership. I just want to introduce you to, to Jesus who will change your life, make all things new, forgive you of, a, of your past so you can make heaven your home. On the count of three, I want you to do something really radical, really bold. I want you to slip your hands up, slip it right back down. That's just you saying, I want that today. I wanna start a relationship with God today or I'm coming home, I'm renewing that relationship. Are you ready? I'm not gonna drag it out. One, two, here it comes, three. Anybody in this place? God bless you. God bless you. This is awesome. God bless you, sweetie. Awesome. Sir, thank you. This is awesome. Let me do this. Let me lead, lead you in this prayer. I'm gonna lead you in this prayer. Watch this. This is the th- beautiful thing about God. All things become new in him. And God's gonna transform your life. He's gonna, the Bible says you'll be born again. What does that mean? My spirit has been made new because of what Jesus did for me on the cross. Say this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. I believe that he is the son of God. I believe he died on a cross and I believe he rose from the dead. Jesus, I'm sorry for running from God. I'm sorry for living life my way. But today I'm running to you. Thank you for being my sacrifice. Thank you for paying my price. Jesus, I surrender to you right now. Make all things new. Change me from the inside out. My life is in your hands and I'm born again and I know it. I'll never be the same. Holy Spirit, fill me today. Give me the power to make Jesus famous by the the way that I live my life. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for timing your word today. Lord, I, I believe that faith is rising, that courage is rising, hope is here. God, thank you that people were born again today making decisions that will impact eternity today. But God, I thank you that the church was strengthened by your word today. So God, I pray as we leave this place, we leave this place, we go out in the blessing of God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon your life. May the Lord be so gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may God give you this week his peace that passes all understanding that would guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. If you receive that, say amen. And can we put our hands together for everybody that made a decision today? Come on, church people. We're born again today.